And uh, let's rock and roll, Steve. Friends, I'm worried. While the U.S. is busy building southern walls and scrutinizing people from dirt hole countries, no one's giving much thought to our quiet but abnormally happy neighbors to the north. And believe me, there is action aplenty along the 49th parallel. Did you know it's the world's longest undefended land border? Is anyone paying attention to what our neighbors in the great white north are doing when it comes to their possibly sneaky plans for the south? Have you noticed that Canadians are slowly but surely redefining American culture, music, sports, movies? And haven't we all had enough of Michael Buble? <laughs> hey, I don't know. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> and stating facts. They buy their milk in bags, it's true. They race in bathtubs, they have a strategic maple syrup reserve, and they love their poutine. Face it, they're bad at anything that doesn't involve snow and ice. Should you be worried? Is Canada making nefarious plans to infiltrate? Here's a fact. Most Canadians are already perilously close. Did you know that 90% of Canadians live within 150 miles of the US border? Yes! So how can you tell if there's a Canadian sleeper cell in your neighborhood? Well, sometimes it's pretty obvious, eh? <laughs> but there are, more, are there more already among us? Wouldn't it be good to know more about these cagey buggers from the great white north? Or as they sometimes refer to the, each other, those hosers? Exactly who are these hosers? Well, let's back up. Sure, isn't this our typical impression of Canadians? Lumberjacks, Mounties, Beavers, Hockey, Tooks, Beer, and Poutine, again, the poutine, and flannel, 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 all re very reliable indicators. And yet, what do you really know about Canada and its inhabitants? Well, did you know that Canada is a member of a global cabal of tea-sipping former British citizens, a.k.a. the Commonwealth? And they still swear allegiance to, get this, the queen, I mean the king, oh. And did you know that as a result, Canada now has to change all its $20 bills? Now that's tyranny. Isn't this what 1776 was all about? Well, we already mentioned the national symbol, that furry rascal, the beaver, but here's a tip. Canadians are tired of all your silly beaver jokes, and you know what I mean, Rich. That said, of course, there's a real website in Canada named Mike's Videos of Beavers. Am I getting off topic here? You bet I am. <laughs> of course, you can't identify a Canadian until you can identify Canada. So quickly, to the west we have mountains, lumber and gold. In the prairies we have farms and oil. To the east, more lumber, but with an accent. And then off to Newfoundland, which is so far east, they even have their own time zone. Again, true. Did you know that Canada is officially bilingual? and that most English-speaking Canadians learned their French from food packaging. Well, it's true. How do you think I learned to say concharifique? Now, if only I had a non-serial use for it. Speaking of food, did you know that mac and cheese is unapologetically called craft dinner in Canada? But Canadians apologize for everything. They even make their buses apologize. But are they really sorry? And what are they so sorry about? Well, they're not sorry for their goofy accent. It's so obvious. Why do they pronounce so many things wrong, like schedule and project and pasta and Z instead of Z? Well, aside from having different words for many common American items, Canadians also persist, as Larry pointed out, in spelling many words wrong, most often adding too many U's to otherwise simple words. Yet imagine how much less upsetting it must be to have an indictable offense on your record instead of a felony. Very Canadian. Those crazy Canadians measure distance in meters, temperature in Celsius, nuts and bolts in inches, cheese in grams, and body weight in pounds. It wouldn't be uncommon to hear one say, I had to walk a half a kilometer in 25 degree heat to buy a bag of three quarter inch bolts and 250 grams of cheese. Thank goodness they simplified things by going metric. If you find Canadians to be quite lazy, you'd be correct. They have a three-day weekend almost every month. Get this, in British Columbia, my home province, there was no holiday in August, so they created one. It's officially called the Civic Holiday, but shamelessly referred to as the August Long Weekend. Did you know that Canada's original inhabitants are not called Indians, but First Nations or Aboriginal or Indigenous people? They do not have tribes, but bands, and do not have reservations, but reserves. 
Meanwhile, this elder is no doubt asking her grandson, hey, what's that poutine truck doing over there? <laughs> you probably know that all Canadians have access to free universal health care. For fun, tell a Canadian what your annual deductible is and they will likely drop their beer. All 24 of them. I recently asked a Canadian I know how they like their health care, and she said, well, it's not free, you know. It costs $39 a month. I said, that sounds like free. Speaking of money, sure, Canadians use some American names for cash, but when they did away with the paper dollar and replaced it with a coin with a loon on it, the dollar immediately gained the nickname the loony. Then they got lazy again, and when they replaced the $2 bill with a coin, they nicknamed it the toonie. Did you know that Canada's most famous fast food joint is named after a not-so-famous hockey player? That's right, Tim Hortons, or Timmy's as it's called, and their famous Tim Bits. Did you know Tim Bits is yet another fancy Canadian word for donut holes? Well, at least it's not poutine. And speaking of hockey, did you know that long before there was Monday Night Football, there was hockey night in Canada, when everything in the country came to a halt with the exception of old guys with overactive bladders. It looks like somebody here told the Canadian national team, hey guys, there's a box of Timbits over there on center ice, eh? So let's get ahead of this frosty scourge, shall we? Before we start apologizing for everything from A to Z, before our school kids start saying, bienvenue, before 35 degrees becomes a really hot day, and for God's sakes, before any more restaurants start serving poutine, if you see something, say something, and then say, sorry. <laughs>